welcome to TGA Crafts. My name is Teresa. Today I'm going to show you how to make apple turnovers. And the first thing you need to do with an apple turnover is make your puff pastry. Now a lot of people cringe when you say puff pastry because they think it's so hard to make. Truthfully, it's not that hard. Actually, there's a simple way to do it. And you just, you know, you just gotta make sure the key to making puff pastry is keeping your butter cold. Once it get warm, gets warm and starts to melt, then that's when you start having some issues. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you the recipe, tell you what you're gonna to need to do this. Now this is time, it takes a little bit of time. Um, I've already cut my apples up and I have them soaking in water with lemon juice in them so that they won't get brown. I'm going to get my puff pastry made and get it in the refrigerator. And then while we're waiting on the refrigerated dough to be ready, then we'll go ahead and make our apples because they have to completely cool. And then we'll show you how to roll it out, put them together, bake them, and enjoy them. So without further ado, let's get cooking. Okay, the first thing you're gonna need is you're going to need a cup and a half of butter sliced. It has to be sliced really thin. So maybe like, maybe like an eighth of, a, of an inch and just put it in your bowl. My, don't, try not to put your hands on it because you don't want the butter to melt. So basically you're just going to cut it and put it in your bowl. It's kind of hard not to touch it with your hands. Sometimes it's easier for me if you just pick it up, slice it off, slip it off your knife. And just keep going until you've got all your butter cut up and incorporated. Um, I think I'm going to get a different knife though because I don't like this one for this. Hi, welcome to T2A Crafts. My name is Teresa. And today I'm going to show you how to do apple turnovers and make your own puff pastry. Now a lot of people think that puff pastry is really, really hard to do, but it's not. I'm going to show you a really simple way to do it. Uh, the key to making a good puff pastry is your butter needs to be sliced and very, very cold. I've already sliced my butter up. You're um, going to need four to six apples and you need to cut them up peel them, core them, cut them up into little pieces, put them in ice cold water with a little bit of lemon juice to keep them from getting brown. You're also going to need two and a fourth cups of flour, a half a teaspoon of salt, and two tablespoons of sugar. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get started. So let's cook. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put all of my my dry ingredients in here and I've already measured all of mine out so that it would just be a little bit quicker okay then what you're going to do now you're going to use a fork to mix your puff pastry you're not going to use your hands because if you use your hands the temperature from your body is going to melt your your butter now if your butter does start to get warm and get a little soft just stop right in the middle, go put it in the freezer for five or six minutes and then come back in and put the rest of it in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this, put this in here, in my bowl, in my dry ingredients. It's sticking, <laughs> it's sticking to the bottom of the bowl, it's so cold. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our fork and we're just gonna to keep tossing. Okay, just keep tossing it. And the more you toss it, and as the butter softens a little bit, it'll start making a um, pastry. It'll get, you know, get warm, and the butter will start um, warming up, and it'll, it'll be okay. Now, the key, another thing that I have found is, now, the first time you make it, don't feel intimidated because it's just a, it's just a pastry. It's not like, you know, you can't use it regardless because if nothing else, you can just bake it up, put some cinnamon and sugar on it. So, you know, make you something sweet out of it if, if that's the case. Now, um, this week um, I had intended on doing a couple 
um, craft videos, um, one of the ladies that subscribes to our channel um, wanted me to do a video on how to make mittens out of old wool sweaters that you don't, you know, you don't want to keep. Okay, now this butter's starting to get softer, but it's not, you don't want it mushy, not yet. So you just keep stirring and you can see what it looks like. I'll, I'll just keep stirring this. Um, I'm trying to get some different recipes on uh, video so that I can uh, show you guys how to make different things. One of the things I want to show you guys how to make is a Instapot beef stew. Everybody needs help now and then with dinner. And it's nice when you can just come home, throw something in the Instapot, and dinner's ready in 25 minutes. You can walk away, go do whatever you need to do, you know, get the kids' homework started, whatever. So that's one of the things that we want, we definitely want to do. I'm also going to take you on a little trip with me to the meat market. And then I'm going to show you how I stretch my money, my dollars for my, um, for meals and stuff for my family. We have, we always have good meals, but you know, sometimes like the other night, my husband and I were really tired and I didn't really, you know, I didn't really want to do a, lot, a whole lot of cooking. So I made French toast for supper. A lot of people think that's silly, but you know, it's a good meal. It's something good that you can, that you can uh, just flip together and you don't have to worry about it. This right here is what takes a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pause you guys for a minute, get this mixed up real good, and then I'll come back. Okay, now that I have my uh, butter incorporated and I did end up using my hands to mix it up which that is fine because it did not melt the butter because it was a pretty quick process. Now you're going to need eight or nine tablespoons of cold water and you want to add it one tablespoon at a time and mix and mix up your uh, your dough until it's to the consistency of a pastry. It's starting to come together. This is what takes the longest, is getting the dough ready. But if, if you're uh, trying to, you know, this is just something, you know, that you want to do for special occasions, you know, or make a batch and have them for breakfast, you know, have your breakfast ready for the week. Because this makes... Um, the recipe called it'll make six now I did double mine because I want to make more so that I can put some in the freezer for when my grandkids are here and that will make it easier for me to uh, it, it's okay that's my grandson's phone ringing but that's all right It'll be fine. It was probably his mother. So, we'll go ahead and get this finished. I'll get the dough. The next thing we're going to do after we get this done is we're going to put it out on a lightly floured surface. Um, I'm just going to do it right here on this table. And we're going to roll it into a rectangle and then once you roll it into a rectangle you're going to transfer it onto some wax paper and put it in the in the freezer for 10 minutes after that 10 minutes then we'll take it out and we'll uh, roll out the dough and get ready to get these get the uh, apple the uh, filling get the filling done. It won't take very long to do the filling. The filling is really rather easy. It is 
a fourth of a cup of water with a tablespoon of cornstarch dissolved in it, fourth of a cup of sugar, and two tablespoons of cinnamon. Um, the cinnamon and sugar, you'll put, your, put in your apples and your uh, cornstarch slurry, as we call it, is your uh, thickener. It'll make, make your, like your pie filling. Okay, now I'm ready to pause for just a second, get my hands cleaned a little bit, and get some wax paper out here, and we'll get this ready to go into the freezer. Okay, we're back. I went ahead and what you do is you put your dough on your paper, on your plastic wrap, and I have found that the easiest way to roll these out is to smash it down with your hands first. Then get you a piece of parchment paper and put that over top and roll it out thin, like we have right here. And as you can see, the parchment paper just, it just peels right off. It doesn't leave, doesn't take any of the dough or anything. The next step is we're just going to cover this dough up and we're going to put it in the refrigerator for, uh, how many minutes is it? In the freezer for 20 minutes. And then we'll pull it out and we'll cut it, fill it, and get it ready to put into a, uh, put our fruit on. Now this will make six. There, um, I'll roll it out a little thinner once I get it out of the freezer. Right now it's starting to get a roll it get uh, soft. The butter starting to get soft from from being handled. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick this in the fridge. And then we're going to pause for a second. I'm going to move everything over to the stove so that we can get our apple filling ready. And we'll be right back. Mm. Okay, we're back. In this episode, since we had a technical problem with getting the video cut off before we wanted to, we're going to make the apples and go ahead and put the apple filling in the puff pastry. Um, thank you for watching T2A. We appreciate your your subscriptions and your likes and everybody that's supporting us. Um, so with that being said, let's cook. Okay, I have six apples diced and cut up in a pan. I have a fourth of a cup of sugar and two tablespoons of cinnamon. Now you can put more cinnamon or less cinnamon, whatever you like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my stove on, medium, and I'm going to put a lid on these and I'm going to cook these for just a few minutes until they start to soften. Now you don't want to cook them too long because you don't want them to turn to mush. When they get cooked and we're ready to, to uh, make the, put the thickener in to make the filling thicker, we're going to use a fourth of a cup of water and one tablespoon of cornstarch. You're gonna make a slurry and you'll pour that in after your apples are cooked. And then when it gets thick, it's done. Then we're gonna take it off of, the, off of the burner and we're gonna let it completely cool before we take it over to the table and put it into our puff pastry. So with that being said, let's get these apples done and let's get this puff pastry done and we'll have us some nice apple turnovers for breakfast tomorrow. Smell that cinnamon. Mm, that smells really good. Now the key to these um, these pe puff pastry, like I said, is in the butter. Don't let this intimidate you. It's not that big a deal. Like I said, you can always, you know, make cinnamon crisps or something out of it if you don't, you know, if you don't feel like you 
accomplished what you wanted to. But puff pastry used to be something that I wouldn't even I wouldn't even think about doing. But now I just look at it like this. If I make a mistake, I'll try it again and I'll practice until I get it right. So let's take a pause while these apples are cooking and we'll come back when they're done and show you what's next. Okay, this is our apples. This is what your apples will look like when you get them in your pan. Um, now they will, the juices from them will start coming out and it'll make like a little syrup in it, but it'll be, as you can see, it's, it's, it's a little watery, but after you put your slurry in there, it won't be watery anymore. Let it, you know, cook for just a few minutes more after you put your slurry in. It'll thicken up, you'll know. Um, you can make it as thick as you like, but I'll show you the way that I like to do mine because it makes it just more like in a little apple pie than um, than like a you know a kind of like a fritter apple fritter. But we're just going to cook these until they're tender. We don't want to overcook them and keep stirring them so that the cinnamon and the sugar is on all of it. Okay, our apples are ready for us to put our cornstarch and our water together, which makes a slurry. It's a fourth a cup of water and a tablespoon of cornstarch. I'm just going to pour it in here and let it stir it up so it'll thicken and it won't be, it won't, it'll, it's really already really thick. Um, no, no longer than I put that in there. So I'm going to take it over here and I'm going to sit it off on the stove because we want these to, these have to be totally cool before we put them in our, and, and as you can see, see how thick that is? That's, that's how you want it because you don't want your juices running out of your, out of your, uh, puff pastry because then you, your uh, apples and stuff will be dry inside your apple turnover. So we're just going to leave this sitting here for a few minutes, let it cool down, and we'll come back and we'll put it in the puff pastry and bake them up. Right now I'm going to turn my oven on, on to 400, and get it ready. For the first 10 minutes that you cook your puff pastry, you want to put it on 400 degrees. After that, 10 minutes is up. Then you want to turn your oven down to three, 375. And then you'll cook them for another eh, 13 to 18 minutes. But you just want to watch them to make sure that they're not getting too brown. So we'll be right back in a few minutes. Okay, we're back. What we did was we took our dough that we took out of the freezer. And we rolled it out. And we cut it, made it triangle and cut it into sections. You can make these any shape, any size you want. You can do triangle turnovers. You can do whatever you want. We chose to do the popover style. So you put your apples in there and you roll your dough so that it comes down in the front. Make sure your apples are in there. And then you're going to take your fork and you're just going to crimp it together like so. Well, that one didn't crimp very well. Well, I'm doing this backwards, so um, just crimp your crimp your edges. You can make it as fancy or not as fancy as you want. I'm just trying to hurry to do these, and I'm going to do mine on the edges to seal in those juices and stuff to keep the the juice from the apples and stuff inside them. The thing you're going to do have to remember is you need to cut a hole in the top of them, a very small hole, so that they can, can vent, the, the heat can escape without um, staying inside. And it, it, it's just an airflow. So I'm just going to cut these like this a little bit, like so. I better crimp this one down before. Let's pull this up just a bit. Crimp it down. 
it it probably would work better if I crimped it on the ends first like I just did makes I think it'll make it a little bit easier okay then you're gonna take these and you're just gonna put them on your cookie sheet okay now you can use your your bench scraper to put them on here or you can just pick them up like I did the first one. Now, I'm, the, this this made 10. So we will have enough that we can put a few in the freezer if we want to. And we can have them at a later date. So we're going to put some more apples in each one. And finish crimping them. After we've got them all crimped and that, then I'm going to... Brush them with the egg and milk wash, and then sprinkle them with some, a little bit of sugar, not a whole lot, just a little bit, and when you put the milk and the egg on here, it'll make it shiny, the crust will be shiny. You can actually, if you have a little bit of apple left, what you can do is you could eat these with some cinnamon toast or something for for breakfast and we might just have some left I don't know I think we will not very many but we'll have a few because I like to put a little bit more apple if I've got it so that you can taste the apple in them I mean after all it is a apple turnover Okay, I think we're going to just stop with that because I want to get them too full. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to pull them over. We're going to crimp the ends. I think I'm going to put my fork in some flour. Crimp the front. Put our pockets. Now you, usually, you don't have to put a whole lot on there, just a couple keep the, the air from uh, overcooking the, it'll overcook the apples and it will also, see I got that one a little bit too full, but he's all right, because he's a little one and that, I'll eat the little one. And I don't think I'm going to put any air holes in that one because it kind of came through the top, which is fine. That's one of those things I was telling you about that it um, it kind of makes a a little bit of a mess, but if you're, I'm not a professional. I've never claimed to be a professional, and the foods I make, basically, I make for my family. I you know I do do a little bit of catering every once in a while, but not. Not as much since I've gotten older and retired. So now I basically spend more time with my grandkids. And I try to spend more time with my boys, but they, they work. So you don't really, you know, when we do get time together, I don't want to be in the kitchen all day. So sometimes I'll make like things ahead and I'll give you some good recipes for when it gets closer to the holidays, like the 4th of July and and uh, Memorial Day and stuff like that. We'll do some cookies and some different things that um, that we we do pretty much on a, on a regular basis for our holidays. We usually have a big holiday fireworks at one of my sons and we try to shift off and and do different houses so that for our holiday so that one person's not getting stuck doing all the cooking and stuff it just makes it a little bit a little bit easier and a little more enjoyable okay we are almost done now see how pretty that one is this is the way you really want them to look they are, um, they're very 
very, they'll be very fluffy when we get done with them. The puff pastry will be very puffy, be flaky, really flaky. So I'm going to take this one. I think I'm going to try to rearrange these. There we go. That might work a little bit better. He's still going to try to come out, but he's, there we go. And then I'm going to just continue doing this. This is, um, this is just something that my grandson and I spend time doing. We, we cook and, you know, try to do different things, crafts and, and my granddaughter likes, is a crafter too. So, okay. Now we've got that all done. What we're going to do is we're going to brush them with our egg wash, which is two eggs and about three tablespoons of milk. We're just going to brush it over the top of them so that when they bake, they'll be nice and golden. You can put a little bit of cinnamon and sugar on top. You can put just a little bit of cinnamon or just sugar. Um, I think with these, I'm just going to put a little bit of uh, sugar on the top just to give them a little bit of a, a, a kind of a shine, which is what this egg wash usually helps with is to make it shiny. And it browns it really well. So, okay, so we're done with that. I'm going to just sprinkle a little bit, not much, just a tad bit. Because the inside is already sweet. So you really don't want. Okay, they're ready to go into the oven for 10 minutes, and then I'll turn them down to 375. And then we'll come back when they're done and we'll try one. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. We've got our apple turnovers all done, and now we're going to have our taste testers test them and let us know what they think. This is delicious. Hmm, the crust is really flaky. Apples are seasoned just right. I think this is a breakfast keeper. Something else you could do with this is you could put these on a plate, get them, warm them up, put some ice cream on top of them. It's like a little, little apple pie and ice cream. Thanks for watching. We hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button so that you get notified every time we upload a video. Enjoyed being with you today. Have a great day.